Thanks for joining us back here at Somerset Place State Historic Site. We're standing near the site of the 13th slave dwelling known as the Sally Collins home. In 1843, this one-story structure was home to six people, including 43-year-old Tom Mutton, who was one of four children born to Esther Mutton. Tom married Bet Comer by 1839, but it appears that both suffered from poor health because they were documented as being infirm. Unfortunately, we don't know what happened to Bet by the time Tom lived here in 1843. We do know that another unrelated family lived with Tom, that of 34-year-old Milton, his 28-year-old wife Linda, and Linda's infant son Albert. The couple also had a daughter named Daphne, who died a few years earlier. Also occupying the same home was 72-year-old matriarch Sally Collins. Sally was born around 1771 in Africa, and 15 years later, she and 79 other Native Africans were forcibly brought to the plantation directly from their homeland. We don't know the name of Sally's African country and or village. We also don't know the nature of her life and status in Africa, her ancestry, or culture. Whether she was kidnapped from her village by white slave traders or brought to them and sold by her own kind is also unknown. How she fared physically and emotionally during the plantation startup period, which encompassed brutal working conditions to dig a canal, clear the swamps, plant sufficient food, and build adequate housing will never be known. All that can be gleaned from the plantation's historical record is that Sally was one of the few Native Africans who survived the startup period. She began a partnership with another Native African named Kofi, which translates to Born on Friday in the Af Akan languages of West Africa. Kofi was born around 1760, and together the couple had at least five children. Unfortunately, Kofi is presumed to have died before 1819. And by the time of the 1843 inventory, only one of their children was still living, a daughter named Betty, whom we'll talk about in a future video. However, Sally did have one family member living with her at that time, her 12-year-old granddaughter, Edie. Edie's mother, Nisa, whose name means sixth born child, had passed away only a few years prior. Sally suffered further when tragically everyone she lived with was inherited by Louisa Collins and forcibly taken to Alabama later in 1843. Sally remained at Somerset Place as one of the last surviving Native Africans until her death in February 1850. In the face of unspeakable horror, tragedy, and loss, Sally's life embodies the resiliency, strength, and determination of the enslaved community at Somerset Place. To learn more about Sally's family, watch our other videos linked here. You can also visit our site for an in-depth look at life on the plantation. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Until then, thanks for tuning in.